Hello there, I'm Dark Shades and I'm going to try and do a quick video uh, because I've got my reggae show this evening on Lover's Rock Radio. And so, but I wanted to do this because I've been given quite a few topics to discuss and I wanted to try and do one at a time. This one is about what do you do if you no longer find your long-term partner or spouse attractive? And I thought to myself, wow. Can you imagine being stuck in a marriage and you don't find your partner attractive? That must be really, really hard because, you know, when you're young and, you know, that's what turns you on. They look good. They smell good. And you're like, whoa, I really like them. And then you, you kind of think it's not really a superficial thing because you grow together. You've got interests together. And I don't know if those interests are real or because you are so enamoured with each other that things just kind of, you just kind of compromise and you just go along with it. But what happens 20, 30, 40 years down the line when they become like in COVID, they decide that they can't be bothered, they start smelling, their malt starts stink and then put on weird and they're just slovenly and you know, you're looking at them and like, you don't want to have anything to do with them and yet they don't really notice. And how can you address that without being rude? You can't say, look, stay away when you're not too tink, can you? You can't really say that. So instead, you've got somebody who hasn't realised that they are deteriorating, whether it's because they can't be bothered because they're in the house. I've heard a lot of people say, I'm in the house, why bother? I don't have to dress up, I don't have to do this. Some of them, oh, they'll wash for two and three dear. They just in the house. And it's funny because every because I'm still working, fortunately, and thank God, um, I have these I have to attend these Microsoft and Zoom meetings. And anytime I go in there, they're always saying, Oh gosh, man, you look so glamorous. Oh, you look so nice. I said, as far as I'm concerned, when I have a Microsoft meeting or if I have a Zoom meeting, I'm having a date. That's what I think. I think of it as though I'm going on a date. And so I make an effort. I try to make myself look good. Then you see them start feeling up their hair and start looking to see what they have on. And I'm forcing them to self-examine. I'm forcing them to examine themselves. I don't have to say a thing. If they want to look like crap, it's up to them. But by me making an effort, it will turn on them. Sometimes even with your husband and your spouse, you don't have to do a thing. This is what I'm getting at. Sometimes the way you are, the way you dress, the way you take care of yourself will force them to address themselves, force them to self-examine. You know, they might even think, say, you have a man. Let them think, say, you have a man. Or if it's women, you know, let them think you've got another woman. But the fact of the matter is, you start taking pride in yourself. You start, you know, if you're going to the gym, go to the gym. If you wear a little makeup, do your hairstyle, make sure you fix yourself up good. You'll soon see them start look. And then they'll have to start look at themselves and think, mm, mm, I don't smell too good. Some of them, that's how they are. Oh, my breath's a bit off. And they force them to examine themselves. You can't change anyone. And it's no point criticising and judging them and having a go. There's no point. They'll think that they're doing it for you. They need to do it for themselves. So force them to self-examine. When you're falling out of love with somebody you've been with a long time, it's normally because they've become complacent and they can't be bothered and they've taken you for granted. That's why it normally is. Sometimes it could just be that, you know, you've made a poor choice. It was okay while you were growing up and while the kids were young and now the kids have grown. You find you've got nothing in common. You've grown apart. You're coming from two different worlds. It's not right and it's not wrong. It doesn't matter. It's about whether or not you can bring it back to where it was. What attracted to you to them in the first place? Anytime I'm in a relationship, I might as well be on a date every single day. That's the way I am. They don't know if they're coming or going. I don't take nothing for granted. I don't, my, don't make myself too available. I don't do too much. I'm loving and all of that stuff. But you have to keep the relationship alive. You can't just let it go on. 
You always have to try and keep it current, fresh. Pretend you're, it's a first date. Did you remember that um, movie with Drew Barrymore? And it was like 50 first dates. And every day, um, Adam Sandler had to behave as though he was on a date for the first time. That's what it has to be like in relationships. You don't become complacent. You don't become slothful. You don't start not putting on any cologne and not washing and not making yourself look and smell nice. There is nothing worse than spelling perspiration or somebody smells frowsy. Uh Uh-uh. So if you've fallen out of love, it's probably because that person has let themselves go. And you don't find them attractive anymore. And you don't know what to do because they're grumpy and they're moody and they're not the type of person you can say fix up to. So what you have to do is sort out yourself and make yourself look beautiful. Let them double check themselves. Let them believe what they want to believe. If they want to tell you, oh, you know, you shouldn't be with that person or you should be talking to that person. You you know, if you're a decent married woman or if you're a decent woman, you're not going to be talking to that person or that one of the opposite sex. But when you're not screwing around and they're just platonic, it's just a platonic relationship. Don't take their notice of them. You are not responsible for their insecurities. The fact that they're letting themselves go, let them let themselves go. You don't let yourself go. That's all I'm saying. You keep your friends, that's all you've got to keep sanity. And if they say you look nice, it gives you a little bit of encouragement because your spouse probably isn't saying it. That's what you've got to do. But I think falling out of love is because the dynamic has changed. You know, you look at them and you think, oh, I can't be asked. They come and touch you and you're like, you, you feel a bit, you know, squeamish. You know, you don't want them to touch you, you know. And you don't know how to say it because it's your husband or your wife. And you don't know how to distance them. Some people will say, some, you, you know, in Jamaica, they will say, you're too damn tink. Go on, go wash. Go on, go beard. That's what the men used to say to the women. Now the tables are turned. The men ain't bathing. The men ain't washing. The men ain't looking after themselves. And we're supposed to take them up. I don't think so. If you want to get in bed and cuddle up and get a little piece of loving, go and have a shower. And then when they're clean, you can give them a little treat. You know what I mean? So they associate cleanliness with little treats. <laughs> but yeah, don't make them come with their frowsy self and just because they're your husband or your wife. You know, I don't believe in complacency in relationships. I really don't. I think you can keep the fire burning every day, but you have to keep a man on his toes, especially men. Women, Men, you might need to keep your woman on your toes. I don't know. I could just speak for women relating to men. You can't let a man think, oh, yeah, they've got you, and they don't have to try, and they don't have to do anything. You know, everything's cool. But it has to be coming from a genuine place. It can't be contrived, and it can't be manipulation. It has to be who you are. If it's not who you are, you need to work on yourself. Because when I am creating a first date or when I'm creating a certain amount of distance, it's not something I'm calculating. It's because I have so much to do. I'm doing my stuff. I'm, you know, I, you know, I need to dress up for my videos. I dress up for my meetings. And that's just the way I am. So that's me naturally. So I'm not contriving. But... It, it's something that I think most women need to do. I think most women need to fix up. And I think men definitely need to fix up. Men, they go through this midlife crisis after they reach a certain age and they don't take care of themselves. And they expect you to still love them. That's the joke. You're still supposed to find them attractive. When I come with a mash mort, where are they going? And their old clothes, where are they going? And their foot pink and then dry and they don't clean their skin. Where are they going? But they come. <laughs> then ready to come and put them on on you. And you're supposed to accept it. No, you don't have to accept it. You have your standards. Don't let your standards go just because you're a wife or a long-term partner. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to let your standards go. If you've been letting them go over the years, then that's up to you. You need to address that. 
because now they're going to start saying, so how come you never said anything before? And then it's going to start looking suspicious. These are kind of things you need to be saying all the time. As soon as they slip up, babes, you know, I'm going to throw that top away. Even if you have to buy them a top, you know, I'm sure you've got something nice to put on. You know, I've had, you know, I've known people that they say, you know, I say to them, oh, I don't like those jeans. I mean, I'm in the house. We expect, where you are, me for the I'm like, I don't bloody care if you're in the house or not. I want you, when you look, come into the house or into the room, you look good. I don't bloody care if you're in the house or not. Fix up. Put on a nice, even if it's a tracksuit, make sure it's a tracksuit without paint marks and without holes and without, you know, all mash up and, you know what I mean? Make sure you look good, even if you're in the house. There's lots of things you can um, be leisurely in the house in. You don't, I'm not saying you have to dress up and wear a shirt and all that kind of stuff. You can even wear a T-shirt and a pair of shorts or jeans are the best things. But in the house, you might think they're a bit too confining. So you've got tracksuit bottoms, but just make sure the tracksuit bottoms have not got holes. They haven't got no stain marks where you, you, you dropped your soup on it or whatever and the stain don't come out. And you've got this big old stain on your T-shirt and you don't want to throw it away because you might need the T-shirt for when you're working out in the backyard. No. That's not how it's supposed to be. So when you're thinking about falling out of love with somebody or trying to maintain a relationship, what time is it? I've still got a little time. Yeah, and thinking about maintaining a relationship, you've just got to take pride in yourself and to, you know, encourage each other. Don't let each other lapse. You know, I often tell my man, you know, oh, I'll tell him. Oh, I don't like that top. Oh, I don't like those trousers. Oh, I don't like those shoes. And he'll say, well, I just need them for the garden. Oh, I just need them for this. Or I'm only wearing it for that. I said, well, put them on when you're going to use it for that. And, you know, wear these ones when you're, with, you know, either with me or whatever. You, know, you have to do that. If you let them lapse, they will. And it's not about criticising and it's not about putting them down or making them feel bad. It's doing it in a loving way, in a way that lets them know, look, my woman wants me to look good. My woman wants me to smell good. And if I want to get some of my woman, I better fix up. That's what it's about. Your man has to love you enough and want you enough to want to fix up. But if he can get away looking dotty and stink, he's going to do it. Why would he bother? If you're still going to let him make love to you when he smells frowsy, that's up to you. Nothing I can say. But ain't coming near me smelling frowsy. Sorry. Anyway. What else? So you've fallen out of love or you've outgrown each other. Is it mutual or is it just different attraction styles? Have you kind of grown a bit different? You know, um, was it physical in the beginning? Good sex, passionate. Um, was it for financial stability? Some people get together because of financial stability. Was it is emotional? You can share, you can be vulnerable with the person. Is it social? You do things together. Is it cultural? You have similar cultures, traditions, religion, you have similar beliefs and values and stuff like that. Whatever you fell in love with should still be there somewhere. Should still be there. And, you know, that's why they say when you love somebody, a little spark, a little match can flicker it up back. So it's about finding or trying to remember what it was you loved about that person and seeing what it is you can do to get that spark to reignite. Um, some couples were never in love. They were fulfilling an expectation. And some people do that. They think, you know, you often hear on um, Love Island in these, some of these shows, oh, I've been with you for two or three years. You know, I should be married. I should have two kids by the time I'm this age. Some people, they just get with somebody because they want to fulfill an expectation or an obligation. They feel as though they should be married within a certain time. They should have kids within a certain time. They should have a house in a certain time, not necessarily in all of that order. But that's what they think. So they get married out of expectations. 
And then, you know, after a while, they realise that, oh, maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. And it's too late. They're already in it. They become miserable, uncooperative, sullen, start having affairs and all sorts. Some marriages break up after several years because the children have grown up. They're bored. They've taken each other for granted. There's no passion. They've got different interests, nothing in common apart from the children. So if a relationship is based on similarities and excitement and momentum, it can become, if it isn't based on similarities, excitement and momentum, it can become uninteresting. You need to experiment sometimes. You know, ladies, go and buy one of those little nurse outfits. You know what I mean? Well, you don't even have to get a nurse outfit. Cut up one of your little dress them and fix it up and put a little bow and put a bow in your hair. Or do something different. And they're like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, so, um, yeah, but you do have partners who are either obstinate, rebellious, no matter what you tell them, they are going to alarm bells. Um, I'm going to have to stop in a minute. They, no matter what you do to tell them, it's getting louder and louder, isn't it? What have I got on? I'm going to have to switch it on. What time is it? Hold on one sec. Yeah, sorry about that, but otherwise I would have had to stop it right in the middle of nowhere and that would have driven me nuts. Anyway, so you get some people who are rebellious and obstinate and no matter what you tell them, they're going to say, no, 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 I did that. I, you know, you have to accept me how I am. You know, bloody hell, all the alarms are going off. <laughs> because I've got to do my radio show and so I don't want to forget. Sorry once again. Anyway, you have people who are stubborn and no matter what you do, they say, oh, you know, yeah, you accept me how I am. This is how I am. And you're like, yeah, but why do I have to be subjected? And you can feel like a prisoner because you can't really say, I'm going to leave you because you don't want to fix up. It seems like a very stupid reason. But they need to change. Otherwise, that relationship is going to deteriorate to nothing. But so, sadly, it takes a woman taking extreme action for a man to fix up. And it's such a shame that you have to wait until you reach that point where you just give up and you can't be asked for a man to say, oh, bloody hell, I need to fix up. And then by that time, you've probably lost the woman because she's no longer emotionally invested in you. She can't be asked. So don't let it reach that point, men and women. If that man is being stubborn, you need to start making some ultimatums that you're prepared to stick to. Look, you know, I find that I'm falling out of love with you. I find that you're not making an effort. I find that you're, you know, you're getting less and less attractive to me every day. And I'm very, very concerned about it. I want to save our marriage. So please, please go have a bath. Please, you know, put in your teeth. Don't wear that, that bloody woolly hat every time you come through the door. Don't, that that T-shirt with stains on it, I don't like it. I want to love you, but you need to help me to love you. You need to reignite the fire, otherwise I'm going to go off you. You need to talk, you need to communicate. And if you're doing it from a place of love, he's going to understand. And I don't, you don't know, F and blind and insult if you're trying to save the marriage or the relationship. Anyway, what else is there? Um, so, yes, you do have the part where, you know, it is superficial. And if your relationship was based on looks and what somebody has, that's not going to last because as soon as the um, appearances fade and the money fades, there's no love. So you, you, you would have had to have gone into that relationship out of love. And when I'm talking about no tea, I don't mean that for people because we all lose our teeth, we all lose our hair. I'm just talking about the accumulation of things that people do that don't make them look right. 
So if they if they're losing their hair, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, you make sure you wash your hair, you smell clean. If you're losing your teeth, you make sure you buy some dentures and you keep them in your mouth. And you don't have to take them out while you know while when you want to make love to someone. That's what I'm talking about. And even if you have even if you're limping around, you can still look good. You don't have to let yourself go. If you have a beer belly, you can have a nice loose t-shirt. You don't have to tuck tuck the t-shirt in so the whole of your belly is hanging over. But all I'm saying is, and cream your skin. That's all I'm saying. Take a little pride in yourself. Make the most of what you've got. So if it's come over that I'm criticising people who are falling apart because they're getting old, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying that regardless of who you are, how your body is ageing over the years, you can still take pride in yourself and smell good and look good. Look at um, Yellow Man. He had a stroke. And he looks good. Him dress up and fix up. He doesn't say, look, oh, I've given up. Does he? Anyway, um, what else do I want to say? So, um, yeah, like I said, you must always try. And for the female part, just always try to look beautiful. Be respectful. Be calm all the time. No insults. No throwing away and, and being rude. It's not, it's not necessary. I don't, you don't criticise, you don't judge, and you don't correct. But you do need to get your point across. So you compliment them when they look good, and you can ignore them if they think, you know, you can say, look, darling. And when I say ignore them, I don't mean in a horrible way. You can say, oh, babes, I'm, I'm not really feeling it today. You know, it would have been so nice if you'd had on some cologne, you know? Anyway, so change your behaviour and attitude and appearance. Pretend that you're dating. I've already said that. I found love late in life. And I don't know if I'd met my partner when I was 18, if I'd, if we'd still be together. So sometimes it's just about timing. Sometimes you just need to meet the love of your life when you're a bit older. So I'm going to stop it there because I've got to go and do my show. If you want to listen in, it's www.loversrockradio.com. And yeah, you can go together or you can grow apart, it's neither right or wrong. And that's all for now. So sorry for all the disturbances. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and do what's necessary. That's all for now. Bye-bye.